Uh, hello, we're going to be carrying on um, in our second devotional uh, today. The first one was on Monday. This very much follows on. So if you missed Mondays, go back and watch that. This will make a lot more sense. Trust me. Um, I'm going to carry on in Ephesians uh, 4. I'm just going to read verse 13 and 14 today. And verse 13 says this, Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood or womanhood, to the measure of the stature of of the fullness of Christ. I want to kind of just stop there and I'll put it in reverse in a way because I think this will make a bit more sense. I feel like what Paul is saying here is these gifts, these fivefold gifts that are given to us by God, that God is going to continue to give these out generation upon generation upon generation until we attain. And then obviously what I've just read, that that, that verse 13. And at the, at the very end of verse 13, it says, to the stature of the fullness of Christ. For me, that's glory. That's heaven. Whether that's the second coming happens, he returns, or that's I go and be with him in heaven, I, I die. Whichever comes first, that is for me when I obtain the fullness of Christ. So it's it's almost like how I, how I see this is Paul is saying these gifts are going to be with the church generation upon generation upon generation until the church attains we've been saying you know jesus is coming since the second coming is going to happen since jesus so i think we need to maybe kind of get our heads around that these aren't going to fade out it's not like they were with us with the early church but now you know we, we kind of know better come on i, I feel like you say no no this, this is just going to go on and on until we obtain Either way, either second coming or we go to glory. Okay, so I feel like the church maybe just needs to refocus, regroup and, and kind of look at this maybe freshly because I feel like we've maybe lost touch a little bit with it. Okay, however, what I want to focus on today is verse 14 and it just says, so that we may no longer, sorry, sorry, I'll start again. So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. I just feel that is such a powerful one for us, the church, today. The church started out and it was based around the good news. And we were proactive. And we would gather around scripture, we would gather around the presence about prayer and mission and I mean, we, we were one step ahead. We were setting the agenda. The church, we're told we have the mind like Christ. So we should be the most creative, inventive, earth shattering um, force for good on the planet. And we were. Right. We, The church was. And it still is in many parts of the world. And we are still proactive. And because it was a baseline of the good news. I feel like at some point that shifted from we, we stopped gathering around the good news and then we started gathering around just news. And uh, it's really tragic because we then stopped being proactive and we moved from being proactive church to a reactive church. And it started off by just being, oh, this has happened in the world. How do we respond? Which in and of itself is not necessarily a bad question because like what's happened right now, you could say, OK, COVID-19 happens. Um, no one in our, in our church had a prophetic word that was going to happen. I don't know about anyone else's church. Um, and so we, you know I mean? early on, we were like, OK, how do we respond? There's people in need. How do we? And that's that's not necessarily a bad question. The issue becomes when you get stuck as a reactive church. As a people of God, when you get stuck as just being, oh, this is happening, what, what do we do? Because not only do you, do you become one step behind all the time, not one step ahead, but you you relinquish your right. You, you start allowing the, the world to set the agenda. You start allowing the world to set the morality line, the plumb line, the truth line. You can see how that gets really, really dangerous. Yet still, for me, the most dangerous change I think I've seen in the church is we, we, we're, and we're still reactive a lot of the time, but we're now moving away from gathering around news, and that's where we get our information and basing a lot of our life on. That's now switching, so we went from good news to news, and now it's switching from the news to our news feeds, social media. 
social media is great in a lot of ways. It connects us to people across the planet at a touch of a button. Um, but yet, isolation and loneliness are going through the roof. And so I feel like there's some issues we need, we'd probably need to work out. And for me, the, the, the one of the things is the agenda of news. So whether that's you watch BBC News or you read newspapers, the agenda of that news to your news feed are so massively different. The agenda of the news is to give you information and depending on which news you, you like or you go for, it's going to put its little slant on like we all do when we get when we put our opinion across. The, the difference between that and your news feed is it doesn't really care, social media, what information it gives you, okay? Social media is sole purpose is to try and take as much of your attention, your life, your energy, your focus as possible because that's how it makes it, it, it made you into a product and it makes money by essentially selling you to advertising companies. So it doesn't really care what it gives you, information, it just wants to give you as much information that's going to grab your attention as possible and you can see how easily that becomes for the church to drift from the truth. Can you see how dangerous that is? When we went from the good news just to news and then we went from news to news feed. And I feel like what Paul is saying here is let's stop being children. Because now he didn't have BBC News, he didn't have Facebook, Instagram. You couldn't just go and you know follow Jesus or, or his disciples on Instagram. There isn't that kind of level back then, obviously. But what I feel like he's saying is we will always, if we're going to stay as children, we're always going to be enticed, excited by the new thing, whether it's true or not. And what I feel like he's saying is if we can get back to a more round approach of God's heart for how we lead church fivefold model i feel like he's saying actually then we will grow up in faith we'll stop being children we'll stop being tossed around by the latest thing that's exciting whether it's true or not and we'll be wiser we'll be stronger we'll be actually doing the things the church is supposed to be doing ever since jesus good news is many churches around the world are doing it i just feel like for us the church in the west for a lot of churches we, we, i think we've just fallen behind a bit we need to play catch up now. And so my prayer is that, God, would you just kind of, again, just cement this, reopen our eyes to fivefold ministry, to the fullness of Christ uh, in our thinking. And I pray God will just grow us up in wisdom and that we can actually get on uh, with mission, eradicating poverty and all the things like that that we're supposed to be doing as church. God bless and I'll see you Friday.